I, I have not stopped basking off of the word on last Tuesday morning. And it was a, is anybody in here? I'm talking, uh, who was here last Tuesday? I told y'all I don't do dead and dry. I don't do dead and dry. I'm gonna say that one more time. I said, I'm still basking off the word from last Tuesday. Amen, it was life changing. And uh, anybody in this building, uh, Sister Melinda, I want you to come and give, give that testimony. Um, since we have been talking about uh, speaking those things and not, and not allowing our circumstance to dictate to us, but we have the power to dictate to the circumstance. And I was getting dressed coming down and we have young men in our church and she is like a, like a mother to them. And, and, and God prophesied some things last Tuesday. I want you to come and give that give that testimony. Somebody else in here have a testimony because I told you every week, every week, we're not just going to, we're not going to just, just teach without notable results of people getting results because that's what it's about. It's about getting results now. It's, it's, it's not about, you know, us just coming to church and, and just being in church and, and, and slapping and clapping. I, I got to see results. You know, I can't, I, I told the Lord that I said, I'm not going to waste time doing anything that I don't see no results in. Mother ain't got no shame in my game. I'll quit in a minute. Mm -mm. I don't see no results in this. I get on the plane and come all the way from Atlanta to New York City. Um, Pastor Boyd uh, foot the expenses for me to come here. But we will not do it if I don't see results. Amen, somebody? I got to see results. I got to know that uh, the hours that I'm spending on the plane and with my life, I see it coming back as fruit from the people of God. Because it can't just be paparazzi. It can't just be old prophets buying him is here and we just so glad. No, ma'am, that day is gone. It's got, it can't be that. It can't be excitement. And, amen. Amen. Can't be excitement and, and, and oh, and, and prophetess is here and that, mm -mm, that's, that's so dead and gone now. Now, everything that I do in my life, it has to count for something. And I have to know that I'm getting results, uh, uh, Antoinette, because I told you I'm, I'm, I'm still praying about it and have not had an opportunity to speak to, um, to Elder Board as, as of yet. But, but that whole mentality of, of uh, 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 prophetic discipleship and, and, and prophetic apprenticeship, I'm, 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 I'm out to find the people of God that are sincere about God. Mother gathers, and I'm talking about sincere about getting results and not just wanting to come to prayer and say, you know, prophets do it for me. Don't show me how to do it for myself. Show me how to do it for myself. Show me how to do it for myself. And so I'm, I'm, I'm still in that, in that uh, uh, contemplation of, of either coming in on Mondays or staying late on Tuesdays so that I can uh, start teaching a class because I'm dead serious about God and I'm dead serious about what it is that God wants to do in the lives of his people, Mother Gathers. And I, I always say to people, when God, God has called my ministry uh, to greatness. And so if you in this building today, um, two things, you know, either, either you great or you being deceived about your greatness. But even if you being deceived about your greatness, at least you coming in here under the fake auspices that I'm great. Amen. But I know that I have been called to push people into their destinies. And this 5 a.m. prayer is, is not like the 5 a.m. prayer before mother gathers. And I was like, you know, well, you know, maybe I'll just you know, get on the radio and advertise. And God said, no, the same way you grew it the last time. Because if you grow it, if you grow it just based upon people coming by word of mouth. I mean, I can, I have access to, to, and favor with God, to radio stations all over this city. Secular as well as Christian. Amen. I can start sending out email blasts every week and doing this and doing that. And having all the means to do it. But that's not the way we grew the first one. And we're not going to grow the second one that way. We're going to grow it because the people are going to have a desire to come. And when people see change in your life, they're going to want to follow you. They're going to want to follow you. Amen, somebody. And I, and I say that because I don't want to draw the paparazzi. I don't want to draw the high geek people. 
I want to draw the people that's in trouble that's saying, I done tried everything else. And now I need to try something else. And I need somebody to give me some real keys. I don't need nobody to fake me and geek me. I need somebody. And I don't want nobody to hype me. And I don't want nobody to shout me. Because we've been shouting in church for years, Catherine. And we still where we are. I'm not hearing y'all. So apparently there's no balance somewhere. We've been shouting. We've been running around the church and doing all of those things. But still, you got the saints talking about, I want to kill myself. So we got to understand that God is calling us now to teach the prophetic principles of his word so people can now be changed for real. And if you're in this building, you said prophet is buying them uh, since last week. I have a testimony. I want you to come uh, now while Sister Melinda is talking, but this is really powerful. Go ahead. disciples and their bloods and their crypts. Well, he's been coming to the warehouse and he had uh, been on probation maybe about six months and he's on probation for five years. Well, he's been not going to his community service because he said he wants to come to the warehouse There's something about the warehouse is just changing his life. Well, he called his probation officer yesterday because he hasn't been there and she told him, you know, I should be locking you up. And he said, yeah, and he's been explaining to her that he's been coming to the warehouse and Dr. Bynum has really changed his life and he's on the right path. She told him that if he would bring three consecutive payments in, she would close out his probation. When he, when he went on Facebook and posted it, one of his gang-banging buddies went on and told him, you know, man, that's what's up, um, but I tried it, it didn't work for me. So he proceeded to go on Facebook and go back and forth with his buddy and tell his buddy that if you try God, God will change it. And he explained to him that how they used to go out and they used to do what they did, but God stuck with them. And they're really out going out ministering. But his name is Jarvis Johnson. And if you go on Facebook, you will see his testimony. Was facing five years. And it was reduced to three payments to disappear. Two payments to disappear. And people... People like that uh, in our ministry, I, I, I keep telling people all the time that uh, you can lose everything you got, but if you still got your mouth, you can get it all back. <laughs> if you still got your mouth, you can get it all back. I want to Go back to a basic. I want to go back to a basic. And, 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 and this basic is, is going to um, give us a different highlight about where we are. Elder Board and myself and, 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 and Pastor Coca Thomas, after uh, prayer on last week, we just, we just sat for hours because the revelation of what God was saying was... We figured it to be, and I thank God for Dr. Johnson being here. My goodness. Dr. Johnson, my goodness. The basis of where we were ministering on last week even revolutionized our lives and our mindsets and even understanding that this is the mindset of God. And what we are in pursuit of, and, 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 and we're going to get there, what we are in pursuit of is understanding the depth of God as to how it really relates to our lives. How it really relates, because there is a disconnect. And the disconnect is, there's something different about my life when I'm in church than when I leave church. And so there's a disconnect there to the point that the power and the strength and the whatever that I feel when I'm in the sanctuary, I don't feel that round by Wednesday or Thursday. Something about that I cannot connect with. And all of a sudden, uh, I am deemed in my actions as powerless. And the things that come against me, it, 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 it's almost like 
I live in two different worlds. And so for that reason, we are being subliminally, if you really hear me today, we are being subliminally trained to be schizophrenics. To be schizophrenic Christians. Amen. We're one way when we're in church and we full of the power and the glory of God. And then when we get out of church, we're somebody else. Because for once, for, for whatever reason, uh, nobody has bothered to, to, to teach us how the two connect. I mean, I may praise the Lord in church and I may run around the church and I may have a good time in church. But how does the two connect? How do, how do I walk with the same power? How do I feel the same authority and the same power when I'm not in the sanctuary? And anybody can tell you that, that, that actually is around me for any length of time. You know, other than me preaching and have a microphone in my hand, I walk in the same, the same authority. Because when you understand your rights from the principle base, and you know that my trust in God is not by what I feel. Then I can get up tomorrow morning sick with the flu. That didn't change my spirit. That didn't change my right to have authority. I mean, you all have children. Uh, many of you that have children in this building today. Uh, if you tell your child, you ain't going outside, shut that door. You, you mean that with the flu. I mean, you don't catch the flu and say, now go and do what you want to do. No, you raise about the bed, almost can't hardly move and said, I'm sick, but I, I promise you I'll throw a shoe at you or something. If you go out that door, I said you ain't going. So, so what am I trying to say? Even in your worst state, you still maintain your authority over that which you know you birthed out. God, that's good right there. That's good right there. And so if we're not birthing out anything in our walk with God, then we have no authority over that. When you get to the point where you said, no ma'am, no ma'am, I have pursued God for a prayer life. So there's no such thing as the devil telling you, you ain't going to pray or I'm not going to pray no more. No, I have authority over that. And whether I'm sick or whether I'm going through, and, and some of you all may say, well, I don't know because sometimes, no, you can be sick. I, that, mother gathers, I can be sick. I can be down or whatever and be right along in my car and my hand will go up and I just start quick and I'm like, I don't even feel like praising God. Why is my hand up? You come to church and said, I don't even want to be at church. And 20 minutes after you in church, you, hallelujah. And ain't nothing changed. The situation is still the same. But the reason why you praise God like that because you have trained your inner man that no matter what, I will praise God. So now what is that called? That's called authority over your praise. So now we have to go through every aspect of your life in this prayer until you have gained and maintained authority in every area of your life. No, I don't talk like that because I have the authority now. No, I don't move over here like this because I have the authority now. I don't sit in my house and talking about I'm going to kill myself because I have authority. Because I have mind management. I know the psychology of the mind of the spirit. Oh, y'all. Somebody said, oh, that's good. The psychology of the mind of the spirit. Well, somebody said, well, psychology, well, what does that got to do with God? What does that got to do with, what does that got to do, do, with, do with us praising God and seeking God and all of that? Because now, I mean, we're getting ready to get into to, to, to physics and all of that and, and, and mysticism. No, we're not. He used your mind. What do you think you pray with? What do you think you pray with? What do you think? How do you think you reason? How do you think you reason enough with a sentence to get out what you're trying to say with God? He's using your mind to do that. He's using what is in your heart to do that. And so if the body of Christ does not come into mind management, you will never be effective in God. I just said something right there. I just said something. And that's what the Bible said. A double man minded man. Let not that man think he's going to receive anything from the Lord. And the reason why he cannot receive it from the Lord. Because watch this. Watch this. Because whatsoever a man thinketh so is he. 
I just said something right there. Whatsoever a man thinketh, so is, so is he. I want you to see how present everything is. The present sense. Be ye holy. That's the way God talks. He didn't say get holy. He said be that. Whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. That's, that, that, listen, that does not say you're going to be. That means the minute you think it, that's what you are. I ain't get nobody to say nothing right there. I ain't get nobody to say that right there. And so we're trained as Christians to be demon chasers and not people in authority. Maybe I'll just take the, talk to one of these nations back here because nobody... You know, because I know that's hurting some of you all psychology right there. And I just, I know I'm supposed to bind the devil. And I know I'm supposed to plead the blood. And I know I'm supposed, and I know we're supposed to do all of that. But that's not supposed to be 100% of our prayer. Because when Jesus came into the earth realm, do you not know why? He did not experience a lot of demonic as we say, encounters. Because he was the walking word. And the devil knows better than to step upon the word. That's why he said, whatever you're going to do to me, I'm going to let you do it. You can't take my life. Because if I let you take it, then what I'm saying is, the things that are in the world can take the power of God and the word of God and crush it to the ground. Jesus have mercy Whew, that just got me he was the walking word he was the walking word watch this well I wonder why I wonder why he was the walking word well I wonder why he didn't have to sit in and you, you don't read Peter saying and Jesus be encouraged and I just want you to know the father see you and just keep your head up and you just keep going Oh, Jesus, don't worry about it because you know what? We're going to get something to eat. We're going to get something to eat. God going to provide. Why did he walk the earth with all things being fulfilled, man of God? Why did he do that? Because there was no scriptures missing in him. He didn't forget to read Ephesians. He didn't forget to read Corinthians. I'm not hearing y'all in this place. The book of Matthew wasn't missing. There was no scriptures missing. He was the totality of the word of God. And when you become the totality of what God says, then no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, God will condemn it. Oh, y'all sit down. So I, woo, Jesus. Jesus. So technically, watch this. So technically, if you look at it, if you look at the scripture in its technical sense, that which my life is being affected by is what my spirit did not contain. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So if we're walking around talking about I'm depressed, then you heard the scripture that says the joy of the Lord is my strength. But your spirit did not contain it because it wasn't preached to you in the spirit. Deep call it to the deep. That which come forth in power shall be received in power. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing nobody. And that's why you can't afford to just sit. The church can't afford to sit and hear non-anointed preaching. Because my life depends upon it. Because when you preach to me, that word got to get in my spirit. Oh, y'all, if I'm going to survive the hands of the enemy, it's got to be lodged in a place where the devil can't snatch it out. Y'all, sit down. Let me... Ooh, I ain't trying to preach that hard. I just... Jesus. 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 Let me just. 
calm my own self down right here. Lord Jesus, I feel this, Mother Gathers. I feel it. And I feel it for the body of Christ. I feel it for the saints today. I feel it for the 5 a.m. prayer today. I do. I do. I feel it. 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 Let's go to the scripture so I can show you what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Montaigne. Thank you, Jesus. If you look at 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And I want you to go to, I want you to go to the fourth verse. It says, and I'm going to read this in the Message Bible because I want you to see it in the Message Bible. And I was unsure of how to go about this and felt totally inadequate. I was scared to death. If you want the truth of it and so nothing, and so nothing I said could have impressed you or anyone else. But the message came through anyway. God's spirit and God's power did it. Which made it clear that your life of faith is a response to God's power. Not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anyone else. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you. Once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground. But it's not popular wisdom. The fashionable wisdom of high priced experts that would be out of date. In a year or so, God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of his purpose. Did y'all hear that? God's wisdom is something that goes into the deep intent of his purpose. Which means when the Lord begins to release wisdom to you, it's going into his purpose for your life. The Bible says there are many plans in a man's mind but only that which is of the purpose of the Lord will stand everything else going to be knocked down and that's why when you say well this is what God told me to do you don't have to shake I don't care if it looked like it's shaking you don't have to shake because the purpose of the Lord cannot be destroyed I'm not hearing y'all the real purpose of the Lord cannot be destroyed it can shake but it cannot come down do you understand that? Now, how do I maintain this? I maintain the purpose of the Lord in my life. Number one, because I am saved. And let's really uh, do some damage with the word saved. Because the word saved to many of us is, you know, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Well, you, well, well when did you get saved? I got saved uh, January 13th, you know, 1976. So I'm saved and I confess my sins to the Lord. So when I started talking two weeks ago about, about the power of confession and about the prophetic and why we must, we must prophesy. Though we are not all prophets, how we must prophesy. Because it is in the power of what we project up out of our spirits. You got to understand, if there's a will in you to survive, the Lord has planted that in your spirit. You have to understand that we are co-laborers with heaven. That which will come to bind you is already bound in heaven. God, I love you, Jesus. Why do you think you keep getting out? Why do you think every time you make a dumb decision, the Lord keep getting you out? Because the Lord was finished with you before the foundation of the world was laid. Your life was laid out. Why do you think no matter how far you go down, God keep picking you up? Sit down. God keep picking you up. And he keeps picking you up because he keeps saying, my God, I, I already sealed it that Catherine was going to be a mighty woman of God. Oh, Lord. Okay. Here she go again. She going over here and she going over there. But the reason why I got to deliver because my name is on the line. And I got to do it for my name's sake. And that's why it doesn't matter if you in a backslidden state. That's why the Bible said, I'm married to the backsliding because the will of God is in you. And by the time I get through with your life, what God has spoken, it shall be made manifest. Somebody say he done spoke over my life. 
watch this, watch this. It shall be made manifest. So what the Lord has placed in your spirit, watch this. That's what, that's what must come up out of your mouth. Jesus, what the Lord has placed in your spirit has to come up out of your mouth. Watch this, watch this. Let me show you this, let me show you this, let me show you this. Let me show you this. When, 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 uh, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, oh, we're just so excited because, because demon spirits, uh, you know, bow at our feet. And Jesus said, I, don't get geeked over that. He said, what I want you to get high about is that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And let me tell you why he said that. Let me tell you why he said that. He said that because he was trying to say to them, you didn't do no great thing. The enemy was bound. He was, he, he, he been bound up. He been bound up. You telling him he bound didn't make him bound. He was already bound. But the part that you got to do is to get yourself in another dimension in me. Oh, y'all. That you can proclaim that you belong to me. Come on here, somebody. That you can proclaim. Y'all, 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 y'all. We keep looking for manifestations of demonic forces to make us think that we're powerful. When the, listen, that's the deception of the church and the religious institution. It's to make you think because you can bind the devil, you're powerful. No, ma'am, you're powerful when one day you go from being broke to standing and owning your own business. Being powerful is not just what you buy, but it's the manifestation of what you have had the power to lose. Oh, I just said something right there. Lose you a car, lose you a house, lose you a business, lose the world in your life. You cannot spend your entire Christian life binding a devil that's already bound. this. Woo, tell somebody I'm saved. Salvation. Salvation means to be redeemed and to be saved. Watch this. And so we diminish the word. Watch this. Sit down. Salvation means to be converted. To be changed. Oh, prophetess, what does this got to do with, do with the prophetic? I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you right now. Salvation means to be converted. To be converted means to be transformed. To be transformed means to be completely changed in character, in attitude, and appearance. Which means that's why we can look at people and tell it didn't happen yet. Because, because you can have on a raggedy t-shirt but as the old saints say, your gray leave you. That gray ashy look on your face leave you. You can be sitting up in here with a raggedy tank top on and a pair of raggedy jeans. But the glow of the Lord is all over you. You look like somebody just gave you a bath from the inside out. He said when you get saved, you are transformed. Come on here, somebody. And so we have diminished. We have diminished the word saved. When he said you are transformed, you are transformed, you are converted. Now, I'm going I'm 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 to really help you with this one. This one going to really help you. Well, Satan, Lord, you can bind you, devil. I do. And, and, and listen at us. Watch us. Watch us. I want y'all to see. Lord Jesus, thank you, God. I want y'all to see the deception. Uh, your whole, all day long, Satan, I bind you, devil, you are lying. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood right now. And come on out of here, Satan. And, and if something happened to my, watch this. Something happened to your car. And, you know, you get a flat tire. And, and this ain't nothing but the devil. And, and, and Satan just tried to hinder me from coming to prayer. When Satan didn't try to hinder you from coming to prayer. You've been riding on the same tires for the last three years. You haven't even had the tires rotated. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk. I'm trying to show you the ignorance of the devil. I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you his deception that the 
things that you blame on the devil. This ain't nothing but the enemy. This traffic making me late. No, you left 30 minutes from the church and you left 15 minutes ago and you was going 90 miles per hour and now that the traffic does what traffic does, you want to call that the devil. And it's only because we don't ever want to take responsibility for who we are and our lives in God. We always want to be put in a position to blame what we do not have on the spirit. When the Bible said, Lord, I've given unto you all power. Okay, sit down because I got to help you with this. 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 You can come to prayer all you want and you can intercede till you get blue in the face. You can stretch out and just labor in God until you think you done really did something. But when you go back to the original law and the original purpose of God, when he created man, it was to multiply and be fruitful. So if you are praying and you don't have dominion over the earth realm, I'm not hearing y'all. And you still broke and pitiful and begging and borrowing. Y'all ain't hearing me. You're not doing the purpose. You're doing a thing, but you're not doing the purpose. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let's talk about what, let's talk about what intercession is. I'm an intercessor. I'm an intercessor. I'm an intercessor. An intercessor is one who interrupts. Y'all ain't saying that. An intercessor is one that stands in the gap between what comes at a person and the person. Y'all, come on somebody. An intercessor is a blocker. An intercessor is a blocker. An intercessor is a person that knows how to stand in the gap and interrupt. So how do I interrupt? Do I interrupt but just shut the most side? No ma'am. I interrupt because I am conformed to another person. I interrupt because what the enemy thought he was going to do with my life. Y'all come over here somebody. I did not allow it. Oh I just said something right like there. Ah. Wait. Ah. Did not allow it because Elder Board, I got saved. Wait, wait, wait. What is saved? So that means if the plan of salvation is conversion, and 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 and, and somebody said, Well, I don't understand about why I gotta prophesy and why I gotta speak it out with my mouth. I don't understand why I gotta do that. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And Jesus Christ was uh, beat with many stripes crown of thorns on his head, pierced in his side, spit on, marched to Golgotha's hill, messed with, tormented, all of that. And when he got through doing all of that, mother, he died. He died for our sins. But guess what? We could not partake of all that he had done, Catherine, until we spoke. He said, you ain't going to even get this thing called salvation unless you confess it with your mouth. Which means the way that I got saved, I spoke it into my life. Y'all not hearing this. No, he didn't just die. He died, but you couldn't get it unless you prophesied. You couldn't get it unless you opened up your mouth. Because what he's saying is, I'm showing you the pattern of how you're going to get everything done in your life. You're going to confess it. Y'all, come on. You're going to say, I am wealthy. I am rich. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am whole. I am healed. Oh, come on here, somebody. I do have more than enough. When you meet me, you just met your blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus, I, Lord, I feel this. Tell somebody when you meet me, the, now y'all, 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 y'all scared to say it. Y'all scared to say it. I'm the blessing. I'm the blessing. I'm not coming to you looking for no blessing. I am your blessing. I am your, you just got blessed. Matter of fact, you blessed for sitting down next to me today. Because you don't even know the power in my life. You don't even know where God brought me from. You don't even know what he brought me out of. You don't 
don't even know you sitting next to a miracle right now. I'm not hearing y'all. You don't even know that you sit next to a miracle. So watch this. That's how I know God is about to give you a miracle. Because he would never let you come this close to the miraculous. Unless he was getting ready to do something for you. Oh, somebody sit down. I feel God in here. My God from Zion. Somebody better open up your mouth. Cause see, this is what you, this is what you don't know. This is what you don't know. This is what the enemy want to keep hid from you. He want to keep hid from us. This is the deception of the enemy because he can't get us to go back out there and party and do the stuff that we used to do. So he will cause us to be bound with spiritual deception. This is what he wants. He wants to keep us only concentrated on the fact that, you know what? I got saved. I got saved. And when I confessed with my mouth and I believed in my heart and the Lord saved me, he saved you. 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 He saved you, you, the person. That means the manifestation of his salvation must come through me. He saved me. Salvation means to be converted. Salvation means to be changed. Salvation means to be switched over. So if the Lord saved me, then salvation just don't mean my soul. Salvation, he saved my money. He saved my career. He saved my, he saved my family. We just don't focus on that part because we think we got to go walk in prayer. We think we got to go work in prayer to get peace and work in prayer to get finances and what y'all ain't saying nothing. No, you got to open up your mouth and you got to speak those things which be not as though they were. Oh, y'all. So he got us. Watch this. Watch this. No, we, somebody said, well, is we go, well, then is we going, is we going to pray? Sit down, sit down. Because God wouldn't even let Zachariah speak. When his wife got pregnant, he said, be quiet because you don't even believe this. I'm going to slap your tongue to the roof of your mouth because you're about to confess something that ain't the truth. I'm not hearing y'all. When the angel came to Mary, y'all ain't saying nothing. And made the announcement and prophesied to her. She said, be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. Y'all, I'm not hearing y'all. And immediately, it wasn't six months later, then she got pregnant. No, when the prophetic comes, you got to say, be it done unto me right now. Right now. I'm finna help you. I'm finna help you. Sit down. I'm finna help you. I'm finna help you. I'm finna help you. Be it done. Be it done unto me. And wait, wait, wait. And the first thing, the first method of psychology that must be broken off of the believer is trying to get the miraculous to work in a natural fashion. Y'all, come on here. Because see, the angel could have come and prophesied that you're married and then said, now you and Joseph go in and sleep together. And then six months from now, it's going to happen. There are some things that cannot happen in your life by natural means. There's some things that when God prophesied, it's going to blow your mind. Because it's not supposed to happen that way. I'm not. I can't hit nobody. Tell somebody the Lord going to do it. Tell somebody the Lord going to do it. But it ain't going to do it the way you think he going to do it. Now that was a prophetic word for somebody in here today. I said tell somebody the Lord is going to do it because he has prophesied that right now he's just not going to do it the normal way. Wait a minute. Sit, sit down for a second. How do I know? How do I know he ain't going to do it the normal way? Because he's shutting every door. How do I know he ain't going to do it the normal way? Because the people that I thought I can depend on, even they done turned their back. How do I know he ain't going to do it the normal way? Because it looks like everywhere I turn, I can't see an outlet. I can't get a breakthrough. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Because you turn into the left and there was no breakthrough. You turn into the right and there was no breakthrough. You looking over here, there was no breakthrough. You looking back there, where is, well then God, where is it coming from? It's coming down from the portal of the spirit and your mouth is going to pull it down. I'm 
I'm not kidding y'all. I'm not kidding y'all. This time, the change that's coming in your life is coming down through the portal of the Spirit. And you are going to speak it. Oh, I just... Sit down, let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Let me calm down. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Woo, so be it. Let me help you with this. So be it. I'll be on my way places now and, and, and don't know what I'm going to say when I get there. And I said, God, send the angels before me. Send the angels before me. Where can I? I'll be running late for planes now. And talking about, well, I ain't going to catch no, that, 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 the plane going to wait. The plane going to still be there when I get there. Y'all ain't hearing me. I done walked up the ticket counters. And the lady be talking about, well, ma'am, I'm sorry. This flight is closed. And I'm just handing her my ID. She said, the flight is already closed out. And uh, we can't put nobody else on this plane. And so I know in my spirit, I got to get there on this flight. And Catherine, I don't argue with her while her head is down. I'm looking at her brain saying, you're going to change this. And you're going to put, and she started picking up the phone and said, hello, y'all hold the gate. Because this lady should have been on time. I don't care how mad you are. But when I open my mouth and I speak the word. Somebody sit down. Somebody sit down. Oh, be our shia. Oh, be our shia. Oh, be our shia. Somebody said, "Well, what I'm gonna do about the devil? I don't have time to rebuke him. I'm too busy." No, Jesus already rebuked him. No, come on here. The Bible said Jesus already rebuked him. The Bible said that Jesus made an open show of him and stripped him of his power. So why are you fighting somebody that Jesus has already slain? Oh, y'all, come on. Come on. Come on, let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Watch this. Watch this. When total truth is not in us we are prone to believe the deceiver I just said something right there when total truth is not in us we are prone to believe a deceiver the devil after me and he chasing me and he and and, and, and when I he just always is sticking his head up and, he, and the devil he doing this to me and he doing this to you. And the devil doing this to me. And the devil doing that to me. And the devil has done this. And the devil has done that. Then did you get saved? Because it sounds like you confessed your sins and got left on the playground at night in Far Rockaway. Did you get saved? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Because the devil is scared of Jesus. The enemy don't fool with Christ. So then is Christ really in you? Because the enemy don't fool with Christ. Come on here somebody. Because when he now shows his head to battle against what belongs to God. That's when God said the battle is not yours. I'm not, I'm not here nobody. I'm not. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Somebody said the battle is not yours. 
when he said you need not fight in this battle then why are you in spiritual warfare okay I'm, I'm, I'm. Lord just help me help me help me why are you in spiritual warfare? why are you call I'm in spiritual warfare I'm in sp tell somebody don't say that no more tell somebody don't say that no more tell somebody don't say that no more tell somebody do not say that anymore said do not say I'm in spiritual warfare because the battle has been fought the victory is won you need not fight in this battle there is no war okay I'm wait a minute 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 Oh Jesus. Let me show you an example. Let me show you an example. I give you, I just handed you a million dollars. Now you stand up. Now, I just handed her a million dollars. You come here, Pastor Coco Thomas. You are the devil and you are telling her that she ain't nothing she ain't this she ain't that and you kind of pushing her shoulder a little bit now why he what why the enemy's talking to you and you ain't nothing da 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 you got a you got a you got a broke down house you ain't got no car now I want you to start pointing your finger back at the enemy and telling the enemy no I, I'm not okay let me show you how ignorant that look you got a million dollars in your hand and instead of you turning around going to work the million you still talking about Satan I bind you I, bind. I don't care what you saying devil I'm not gonna spend one minute one minute talking to you with a million dollars in my hand as a matter of fact when they say that the devil follow you I invite you follow me to the dealership Follow me to the mortgage company. Y'all ain't hearing me. Follow me while I create my own business. I will not spend time arguing with you when I got the promise in my spirit. And all I got to do is speak it. Tell somebody that's what you got in your spirit. Oh, sit down, sit down. Let me make this plain. Let me, let me finish this. Let me finish this. Anybody in here got a word? Have you ever got a word from the Lord? Just raise your hand if the Lord never gave you a word. You ever got a word of prophecy from the Lord? Raise your hand. Then guess what? That's what you got in your spirit. You got a multi-million dollar word in your spirit. And the reason why you can't make it manifest. Because you're hanging around dumb people. Because you're hanging around non-spiritual people. Because you, y'all, the carnal mind. You keep trying to tell something supernatural to a natural mind. And mad because they don't understand it. Woo, y'all, 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 y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down because I'm going to help you and I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. You keep trying to tell natural minded people, natural minded people, what God is trying to share with you in the supernatural. And the first thing you're going to get from them is a natural response. Well, I don't think that can work. And I don't think you should do that. And I don't know about that. And if I was you, I'd be scared. And if I was you, I'd be nervous. And if I was me, I shouldn't have never told you because God wasn't talking to you no way. No, I'm, 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 no, 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 sit down. Let me help you. Let me help you. And we're going. We're going. So when we get to, sit down. When we get to, to I believe the, the fifth chapter of Luke, and we start talking about, we start talking about Peter. And see, this is a, this is a natural and a very powerful, powerful text for us. Because the Bible said, he said, I've been toiling all night long, and I have not caught anything. I have not caught anything. So why is God leading me during this era of time to 5 a.m. prayer? Because Jesus said, I got to get in your boat. 
because in order for you to be able to prophesy to the dimensions that God has for your life he has to enlarge your capacity I'm not giving nobody there's some stuff that's enlarged in the heavens that God can't even let come down in your spirit because you don't have the capacity I'm not giving nobody the scripture said that God, my sister, is getting ready to enlarge our hearts because he's about to make the dead sea give up the well. But you got to have the capacity to house what God is about to do. No, 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 sit down. So when Peter said, we've been toiling all night long, what Jesus said is not, watch this, it's not the size of the boat. It's the capacity of the spirit that was sitting in the boat. No, he just said something right there. It wasn't the size of the boat. It was the capacity of the spirit. In other words, Peter, y'all didn't have the capacity to catch nothing. Y'all, come on here. Come on here. You didn't have the capacity to catch nothing because you don't know how to speak to fish. You don't know how to talk the language. I'm not hearing y'all. The things that you know that God has promised you, you can't get it in your hand because you don't know how to talk to cars. You don't know how to talk to houses. You don't know how to talk to the power of your deliverance. Oh, Jesus. You don't know the language. Wait, 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 wait. Sit down. You don't know the language. I, I taught a class this past weekend and some people came from Puerto Rico and the young man was trying to talk to me and he was using his interpreter and all the stuff that he was saying to me and he was just talking 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 and I had to keep waiting to hear his interpreter because I didn't understand the language y'all ain't saying that he was filling out his heart but I did not understand the language y'all ain't saying nothing y'all ain't saying nothing it doesn't matter you got to understand the language you got to be able to know how to talk supernatural you got to be able to y'all come on here everything that comes out of your mouth should come out of your mouth beyond the dimension of who you are oh y'all come on somebody no no Jesus said do me a favor because because some of y'all this is y'all i'm gonna move to texas i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get out of new york i'm gonna move to texas i'm a, you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to california i just i just feel like if i just get to california i just gotta get out of here because ain't nothing happening for me in here because you act like god ain't in new york ain't no, wait a minute ain't nothing happening for me here and jesus said no don't go sell your boat and don't go talk about you ain't gonna be no fisherman no more you just get out the boat and let me get in it in other words you just get out of my way and let me get in this you just you just get out of my way and let me take your whole mind out of the boat of what i said i need to do in your life and let me sit in your boat give me authority in your boat Oh, y'all, let me sit down in your boat. Because when I sit in your boat, authority will sit in your boat. And everything got to come subject to my authority. Oh, y'all, he sat down in the boat. The same boat that wasn't catching nothing. I didn't hear you. The same boat. That wasn't catching nothing. Just the night, the same night, wasn't catching nothing. He said, let me sit down in this boat. He sat down in the boat and enlarged the capacity of the spirit of the boat. And then he said, cast your nets. They said, well, no. He said, go on, cast your nets. He said, we ain't caught none all night long, but nevertheless, Lord. 
at how did his boat at your word at your word at your prophetic word at your word I'll do what you say at your word God I will go where you say at your word I will walk to work this week and catch the bus because that's what you told me to do because apparently you're going to let me meet a divine connection on the bus stop at your word God I'll come to the office early tomorrow at your word God I'll stay late at your word God on Saturdays I'm going to go and sit in Denny's and your family well, what you going to sit in Denver I don't know the Lord just told me to go sit in Denny's on Saturdays at your word because watch this because at Denny's is where you're going to meet your divine connection with some lady saying I'm moving out of town and ain't got nobody to rent my house and I'm afraid to put it on the market and all I need is $500 and you sitting over here and saying God all I can afford is $500 at your word because what you don't know that when God speaks his word and you obey it divine connection start happening he has already earmarked the people that's supposed to bless you he has already earmarked the people they already stepped out. You just got to get in the center of his will and move at his will. How many people believe that? How many people believe that? I just want somebody to believe that. At his will, it's going to happen for me. So, what does he do? What does he do? So I'm going to see how much y'all believe this. I'm going to see how much y'all believe this. Because I'm getting ready to give you the prophetic word for the week. I'm going to see how much you believe God. Circumstance the way it is. Situations the way, it are, the way they are. Everything upside down. Inside out. He says, but at your word, Lord, we'll let down our nets. And the Bible said that they obeyed God. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this week, this week, this week, Sunday he told me that. He said, this week, tell the people, I'm about to break their net. Now you ain't got to believe it. You ain't got to receive it. You, you, you ain't got to receive it. He said, I'm about to break your net. He said, if you do according to my will, I'm about to break your net. I'm not giving nobody talk to me. No, I know y'all think I'm playing, but I'm not. Because I had already seen results coming in in 24 hours. I got already got a testimony that I can't even share yet. Because God said, I'm about to break your net. Somebody better give God a praise in here. you chose to believe me I'm about to break your net because you prophesy no ma'am this is not the time to keep your mouth shut you better open your mouth because he gonna break your net with everything that comes out of your mouth he said I never dare you to speak it I never dare you to speak it because whatsoever you say I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think I am about to break your net hey Say, wait a minute somebody's saying somebody said well how should I how should I praise God how should I praise God with this oh yeah somebody said how should I praise God with this because the Lord said you are prime candidate because if everything you've been pressing for it looks like you're not going to ever get it God said he brought you in here today he put you online today to prophesy that's how you're going to get it because the word just went out he going to break your net drop it again drop what's in your mouth out again at my word prophesy again oh oh come on here 
somebody. Come on, hear somebody. Come on, prophesy again. Prophesy again. Speak it again. Speak life back to it. Transform it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My God, I feel this in the Holy Ghost today. My God, I feel this in the Holy Ghost today. My God, I feel this in the Holy Ghost today. Somebody, come on. You got to prophesy it again. Prophesy it again because this time, this time I'm going to break your net. Woo, y'all sit down. Jesus, have mercy. Let me give you this and I'm going. You can finish reading 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, but I'm going. Let me give you this and I'm going. We are under the anointing of. When you say anointing, you're talking about what's breaking a yoke. The word anointing doesn't just mean goosebumps and put some oil on you that's good that's one of the meanings that's one of the meanings but anointing also means to confer and the word confer means to have an opinion and because of the anointing in the building regardless of what your present state is the Lord is saying there's a second opinion I'm not hearing y'all I know what I see but I know what I'm gonna say I know what I see but I know what I'm going to say. And the reason why I'm going to say the opposite of what I see is because I'm anointed. And because I'm anointed, when I say it, the anointed is going to destroy. I have a choice. I have a choice. I have a choice. Watch this. Here is your choices. Here is your choices. You have a choice. And your choice is you can turn around and bind the devil or you can turn around watch this you can use that anointing to bind the devil or you can use that anointing to speak life to the situation I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing y'all or you can use that anointing to speak life to the situation or you can use that anointing to speak life to the situation and it says and I read this to you what we are under this is what he gave me and I wrote what he said he said we are under the prophetic numa intelligence of God numa intelligence of God watch, watch this it means we are under the anointing of wisdom and knowledge and insight of the spirit of God over all that is in the natural fear of God everything that's in the sphere of God in the natural he is putting us in a position to have insight over it so that we will know how to speak over it are y'all hearing me we are no longer Christians walking through a minefield don't know where to step because if I step in the wrong place I'll get blew up that day is over you are no longer in a maze oh. wait a minute wait a minute I am no longer walking my life I'm talking with y'all, not for y'all. I'm no longer in a maze. I'm no longer walking in a field of booby traps. My spirit now has been activated on the prophetic activation the way Paul did Timothy. Y'all better come over here. No, he didn't go nowhere. No, Timothy didn't go nowhere. In consecrate point, he walked upon somebody that had a prophetic anointing. And when he laid hands on him, it activated what was dormant in him. It caused what used 
to be active in him to come back to life and just in case you don't know your purpose for coming to 5 a.m. prayer this season of your life it is because watch this you are not coming to get nothing new you coming to have that which God has put in you reactivated you coming to have it turned back on you having to go come on somebody you coming so God can charge it again Cause ain't nothing weak about you Ain't nothing passive about you You just been overwhelmed by the enemy You just been I'm not hearing y'all And now you got to speak Yourself to another dimension <laughs> Prophetic activation And what is prophetic activation? Prophetic activation It releases The servant's giftings But it imparts to them what is needed for effective hearing, seeing, discerning, and communicating in the spirit. Write that down. Write this down. After today, after today, write that after today, I will have effective hearing, seeing, discerning, and communicating after today after today after today you're gonna be driving down the street I'm telling y'all you think I'm playing I I know what I'm talking about I'm speaking this word over you because that's how the Lord spoke it over me no I'm telling you your kids gonna come in the house and you're gonna be like well your homework I ain't got no homework and you're gonna say you lying I see it I see it no, what happened today at school? Nothing. You have a good day? Uh-huh. What you do? Because my spirit is telling me something. What happened with you and your teacher? Something. Something. Something ain't right here. Well, I did, all I did was walk across the, 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 the room and got an eraser. No, something else happened. And don't lie to me. Yeah, come on here, somebody. You're going to be walking in department stores to do something. God going to say that ain't the real price. No, what? Mm -mm, get me a manager. Come on here, somebody. You think I'm playing after today? When you walk out of here, it's going to start today. It's going to start today. You're going to have effective hearing. Effective seeing. Because it happened to me. And don't be surprised because God going to show you some stuff you don't want to see. He going to let y'all come over here. He going to let you be able to look right through people. Look right through people. He going to let, I'm not hearing y'all. You going to be able to see right through them. You going to be able to see right through their spirit. Yeah. Effective eyes. Effective hearing. Effective seeing, effective communication. You gonna get ready to say something? Holy Ghost, say, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Say it like this. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't turn down here. Come over here. We having a barbecue. You are gonna be one block away, and God gonna say, turn your car around. Mm -mm. Don't go. That ain't for you. I'm not hearing y'all. Talk to me. Your phone gonna be ringing. He gonna say, don't pick that up. Don't pick that up. Somebody else gonna call you. He gonna say, "Don't pick that up either." As a matter of fact, delete her number right there, cause that's one of your problems right there. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Prophetic activation has begun. I said, "Prophetic activation has begun." You are woke. Touch three people and say, "I'm woke." I'm woke. Come on, tell three people, "I'm woke." I'm woke. I'm woke. And you got to get off by yourself. You got to get off by yourself. And that's why you don't understand sometimes when it look like isolation come. And it look like you're by yourself. And you look like, oh my God, and where's everybody? It's necessary. Because when God has given me to give you effective hearing, effective seeing, effective communication, he got to push you away from everybody so you can look back in. Because people you think is your friend is not your friend. People you think is for you is not for you. But you're too close to see it. So God got to back it all up. He got to back it all up. Get you far back enough so you can look back in. I'm not here nobody talk to me. I'm not here nobody talk to me. That's why you at prayer and your friends ain't. That's why you at prayer and they think you crazy for going. That's why you at prayer and they laying at home talking about, girl, I just can't get up that early. That's why you online right now and somebody else in your family is asleep. Because God trying to back you up from all of it. 
So he said, take a real good look at this. I was doing that in my church and we were doing some things and right in the middle of the service, right in the middle of the service, I kept praying and I kept praying and I kept praying about our finances and kept praying about, and I said, mm -mm. and right in the middle of the service, the Lord said, mm -mm. change the whole financial staff right now, right now, because the Lord let you see. He let you see that ain't nothing wrong with the person, but the dimension that you're looking for is not present. Come on, somebody. Everything got to be super. Not, every, everybody that work with you, everybody that y'all is your friend. If they ain't got your level of mentality in the spirit concerning the supernatural, you're going to have to back up off of them. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Love you. Love you. But this is my life. Love you. But I don't know if I'm going to get another chance for spiritual activation. Because right now, this is my season for prophetic activation. You can always come back and get people. Because they're going to be right where you left them. Y'all sit down. I got to go. It's time to go. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor you can always come back and get people because they're going to be right where you left them. And if you don't believe me, let your mind go back on some of your friends that you've seen from Far Rockaway. And 10 years from now, you'll be like, Janice, you're still the same. you still wearing your hair the same because you can come back and get people. But what you cannot do is come back and get a moment in time when the Lord is stirring up prophetic activation in you and teaching you how to speak and be creative with your mouth. You can't come back and get that season. And if you miss that season, I'm not hearing y'all. If you miss that season, you're going to be turned back into one of those people talking about, I ain't got nothing because of the devil. I can't drive nothing because of the devil. I'm, I'm in the shelter because of the devil. I'm doing this because of the devil. When actually, you doing all that because you were not prepared to receive your prophetic activation. The thing that was going to turn your mouth into power. Somebody said, I hear you, Lord, and I'm finished. Ooh, somebody lift your hands up. God is real in this place. Gotta watch my mouth. Gotta watch everything I say. Gotta watch everything I say. Gotta watch who I say it to. Gotta watch who I say it around. Some stuff right now, I won't say nothing. I won't say a word. Nothing. Nothing. Touch your neighbor. I just heard the Holy Ghost say this. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor. Trust no one with your season of prophetic activation. Turn back to them and say, the Lord just said no one. Trust no one with what you are hearing God say in your spirit. Trust no one with what you are hearing God say in your spirit. Lock yourself in your bedroom and put your face down on your pillow and prophesy so can't nobody hear it, but don't trust nobody. Because sabotage come because we talk too much. Sabotage come because we think we trust in our friends with our testimonies. We think we share with them what God is doing when actually they're the enemy, they are frenemy. Y'all better come over here. Somebody better give God a praise right here. Somebody, you think you think you testify what God is doing when really you're releasing information to a demon? Trust nobody. Trust nobody. That's the word I got in prayer. That's the word I got in prayer. I got that word in prayer for me. He said, close your mouth and don't trust nobody. Nobody with prophetic activation. With what I'm doing right now, with what I'm doing, don't tell nobody nothing. Nothing. Not nobody. Not your sister. Not nobody. Not nobody. Keep it all to yourself. Because this has been your problem. Frenemy sabotage. Mm 
Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Can't trust you with the vision. Can't trust you with the vision. Can't trust you with the vision. Though it tarry, yet shall it come. And he says, write the vision. Dr. Johnson, I hear the Lord saying that to you. Write the vision. Watch this and make it plain. And he that hear it will run with it. And somebody said, well, you know what? I, don't, I ain't wrote it down on paper. Sure you have. The paper in the spirit because the scripture said that my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Which means you, in order to get the vision to come to pass, you got to write it. And some stuff you can't afford to put on paper. Write it with your tongue. Let your tongue be a ready pen. Come on somebody. I just wish somebody would say something. Because what you say in the spirit is going to be lodged in the spirit realm and will not be able to be taken out. The devil can't go up in the spirit of God and get nothing. Come on here somebody. He can't go up in the portal of the spirit and get it. And that's why you got to put it. Come on somebody. You got to speak what's coming down. You got to speak it. And all over this building this morning. My God, anybody learned anything today? Anybody learn anything today? Because I'm going to tell you, when God starts, when he starts restoring your spirit, you're going to start looking different. People are going to say, girl, what's going on with you? You look so good. Just say, God is good. You're going to, listen, you done, done got you a job in the city and then bought you a car and everything. And God said that you catch the bus today. And you don't understand why God telling you because you're going to run into Sue. And she's going to say, girl, how you doing? I'm doing, you, I'm just blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Well, your mother just got to make a run. Amen. Just got to make a run. You on your way to your job. She don't even know you got a car. I said prophetic activation. You got to protect it. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. And said the Holy Ghost just spoke. And said stop telling all your business. Did somebody just get ministered to right there? Even you go home after prayer, people tell me, what happened in prayer? Come yourself. Come yourself. All I can tell you is I was blessed. How was prayer? It was blessed. And don't even play it up. Don't even play it up like, ooh, just say it was blessed. It was blessed. Because if you at home and got to ask me how is prayer, you are a possible contamination to the atmosphere. So I'm not going to geek it up to try to make you calm. Because those that belong here, the spirit of God going to draw. How was prayer? It was blessed. It was blessed. And you invite those that have like spirits. You invite people to come to prayer to have like spirits. The reason why I'm inviting you to come because I can see on your life God want to do something in you. The reason why I'm inviting you to come because I can see that you're ready for change. Come on here, somebody. The enemy wants us to keep coming to prayer while the world keep going to the bank. He wants us to keep coming to prayer and sleeping in shelters talking about I'm suffering for the Lord. He want, come on, somebody. He wants us to be mentally tormented. He wants us to be mentally oppressed yeah. while we come into prayer and get what I call crackhead shots. Or well, you come to prayer and just get your hit. Because that, listen, that don't make you no different than the average crackhead out there. When you come in here and you just got to get your hit on Tuesdays, but you can't make none of it work. Yeah. We will not be subjected to the foolishness. The Bible said, I would that you not be ignorant concerning certain, uh, Satan's uh, devices. He wants us deceived, but he is a liar. He is a liar. We will use this presence and we will use this power to gain knowledge and to gain prophetic wisdom. I come to be prophetically activated because there are some things I need to speak into existence this week. And I don't need to babysit it because when I say it, it's done. Y'all didn't hear me. That's what I'm finding out, man of God. I'm finding that out. When I wake up in the morning to pray at 4.45, I get up every morning. It ain't just Tuesday mornings. It ain't just because I come to New York. My alarm go off every morning at 4.45. And when I get up to pray, I get up charging my day and saying what shall be and what shall not be. I decree and declare. I decide. 
because the Bible said if I decide a thing it shall be established for me it didn't tell me I had to go do it he would do it for me he would bring me the right connections he would open up the right doors and I have not seen God yet when I get up and say something God do this and this is what I want you to do and I want you to fix this over here because I'm sick of this and I speak this right here, and I speak that right here, and I speak this right here, and I speak this right here. I speak that into existence, I speak this into existence, and just like dominoes. <laughs> he said, because what people don't understand is that I gave them my nature, and my nature is a creative tongue. And if you want it, say it. If you want it, speak it. We got to learn how to move in the will of God and in the ways of God. And as we leave this place today, give me those envelopes for our seed. God dropped in the building. I just feel the Lord in this place. I feel the Lord in this place. I feel the Lord in this place. He said 21 people in this place will give the tithe of the Solomon seed. And God told me when I was doing the 107 seed, he said, don't change it until I say so. And this week, he said, change it. And I want you to hear what I'm saying to you. The tithe of the Solomon seed is $100. He said everybody would be locked into the prophetic anointing and the spirit that Solomon sat under. And it would be our season for no war, but wealth. Y'all ain't saying nothing. No war but wealth. It would be our season for us to produce that which nobody has seen before. It would be our season to bring into manifestation what people have never seen before. Somebody ain't saying nothing. He says Solomon gave $1,000, 1,000 burnt offerings. And the Lord spoke to him and said, now tell me what you want me to do. And God spoke to me and he said, I want you to make everybody a part of that seed. And you in this building, he said 21 people will sow the tithe. That's what you would give if you were to give a $1,000 seed. You would give a $100 seed as the tithe. And you in this building, come and get this envelope out of my hand. Because the Lord said you're in here. Because God is doing something supernatural with us. And all he wants people to do is to trust him and obey him. And I'm going to say it again, it's not about me. Because I don't ask for an offering from 5 a.m. prayer. I do it because it's my seed. I do it because this is what God has called me to do. He said to give the tithe. And I'm getting ready to explain this to you. I'm getting ready to explain this to you. He said to give the tithe of it. And every person in this building, watch this. You're to give the tithe of the tithe. That means every person in this building that's got a $10 seed, get it in your hand. We're going to obey God. We don't understand it, but we're going to obey him. We're going to obey him. Come now. Come now. Come now. Yes, I'm going to give a tithe of the tithe. I'm going to give the tithe of the tithe. Some of y'all look at him and be like, now what? And then he said this to me, and I know it don't make no sense. He said, everybody that's left, tell them to get a dime. Tell them to get 10 cents. Get 10 cents and come. Y'all, I know it don't make no sense. I know it doesn't make any sense. He said there were 21 people that would give $100. There's at least 30 people that would give 10. And everybody else that don't have that give a dime. Somebody said, but I was going to give $6. That ain't what he said. If you ain't got 10, give 10 cents. Because it's a line that we coming down through in the spirit. Oh, somebody worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I speak it in Jesus' name. I speak it over our lives and over our finances. I speak it in Jesus' name. I speak it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We always want to bind the devil in Jesus' name. Say, I speak that in Jesus' name. I speak no more lack in Jesus' name. Walk in your house and look at your cupboards and say, I speak no more lack in here. 
I speak no more debt. Debt free. Debt canceled. Come on here, somebody. You in this building. I don't care if you done gave a damn. You say a debt canceled on a dime because that's what God said. Somebody in here better come over here and praise God. I don't think y'all understand that. I don't think y'all understand. That woman had one whole cake and gave it. Come on here, y'all. And the Bible said she didn't lack no more. The woman had one cruise of oil. And God opened up heaven and gave her business. Don't tell me what God won't do for a dime. If you obey him, I said open up your mouth and praise him in here. I know what I see. Ten dollars, one hundred dollars, and ten cents. I'm in the lineage. I'm going through the down the lineage of the seed of Solomon. I'm staying in the lineage of the seed of Solomon. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. In this building right now. Yes, Lord. Every person in this building, 21 people that said, Prophet, it's next week. I'm going to make it my business to stow $100. Come right here in this aisle and get this envelope out of my hand. Stand right there. I'm coming. Stand right there. Next week, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it. Because you know what? I understand what God is doing. I'm going to bring it next week. I'm going to bring it because I'm going to be in the tithe of what God has done in the life of Solomon. No, I don't have the thousand dollars, but you know what? I'm going to sow that hundred dollars next week. I'm going to do it. Y'all, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. My God, the presence of God, he's stabilizing us. He's stabilizing us. He's stabilizing us. Oh, somebody worship him. My seed is $100. My seed is $10. My seed is dime and a, a dime and God going to do it on a dime. He going to do it on a dime because that's the category I fell in. I just wish somebody would praise God. You ain't even got to be shamed today. You ain't got to be shamed today. He going to do it on a dime. Tell somebody he going to do it on a dime. Because I promise you some people going to come back and testify and say all I had was a dime. But this is what God did. Because when the prophetic word comes forth and the Lord speaks it and he prophesies it, the Lord gets on it. Somebody come on and give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Everybody that's sowing that hundred dollars next week, take one and pass it back. And write your name on it right now. And write in the, in the space where it says amount given. Write $100. And on the back of it, write tithe of the Solomon seed. That's what I want you to write on the back of it. Tithe of the Solomon seed. Somebody come on and worship God. Somebody come on and worship God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Somebody said, well, give us scripture to prove that. Because when they start giving to the building of the temple, everybody's household couldn't give no calf. Everybody's household couldn't give gold. Everybody's household couldn't give silver. But guess what? When everybody had given their seed and they got together and glorified God, everybody saw the glory. The glory fell. Oh, come on, y'all. The glory fell in the temple regardless. Regardless, so you can't sit back and say, well, you know what, I, my dime, no ma'am. When the Lord prophesies it, that's what he means. And he said a dime. He said, if you don't fall into the category of a $10 seed, give a dime. Well, I got $7. No, if you don't have three more, it's a dime. Because God going to prove to us that he don't need our methods. God going to prove that to us, Sister Catherine. He don't need how, how we think. He going to show us what he going to do. He going to show us what he going to do. I believe him. I believe him. Do anybody in here feel yourself spiritually growing? Anybody in here feel yourself growing? The last couple of weeks, do you see a change in yourself? You in this building, you said in the last couple of weeks since we hit this prophetic thing and about speaking, 
I see a change in myself. I see a change in myself. Everybody come now and give your seed. All over the building today, come and give your seed. Come and give your seed. Come and give your seed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you doing it. God, you doing it. God, you doing it. It's already done. It's already done. And we shall see signs. And we shall see miracles. We shall see signs and we shall see miracles. God, it's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. I can't stop saying that. It's already done. I can't stop saying that. It's already done. It's already done, y'all. It's already done. It's already done. My God. My God. The more you speak, the more you'll see. That's what I heard him say. The more you speak, the more you'll see. The more you speak, the more you'll see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The more you speak, the more you will see. Glory to your name, God. 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 I speak it. The Holy Ghost says, speak divine, divine, watch this. The Holy Ghost just said, speak divine help. Speak divine help. Speak divine help. Because when you speak it, God going to send somebody to help you. Speak divine help. Some help. Somebody come on. He says, speak divine help. Speak it. Say, God, I speak it into existence. Divine help. Wherever my divine connection is, send it. I speak it into existence. I speak that they will find me. That they will find me this week and help me. Hey, somebody give God a praise. That they would find me this week and help me. Speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will send my divine help. I got people around me. But send me my divine help. The help that will help me. Yes Lord Jesus. That will help the vision. That will help my purpose. Come on somebody. That's the Holy Ghost saying that. God send my divine help. Send my divine help. Send my divine help. That will help my purpose. That will help your will in my life. God send them in my direction this week. And let my eyes be open that I don't miss. When you got them right in front of me God. Somebody come on give God a praise. Telling you everything is spoken into existence by his divine will. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you leave out of this building, your eyes and your ears and your level of communication is going to change to this degree. That you're going to be around people and hearing them talking and you're going to say to yourself, I got to get away from you. You're going to be in the company of people and hearing their conversation and you're going to say, mm -mm, I can't hang around you. I can't hang around you. Because when you're being converted, you got to let God put you out on your own Isle of Patmos. So the Lord can reveal things to you that you've never seen before. The Bible said the deep and the hidden revelations of God is with him.